another th thing that I want to kind of lock down before we go much farther is is to is to clearly define what we mean by woke because I see I see it used in so many different ways that I don't know if everyone's on board with the same thing you know what what they're mm -hmm. talking about. Uh, well, I, I would define it as someone who promotes intersectional social justice. So, what? Okay. So I think you have to define that term now. <laughs> uh, oh, um, sure. It's uh, the the politics of group power relations based on identity categories that I'm sure you are all familiar with. And pushing back on these identity categories is called racism, homophobia, sexism, et cetera, et cetera. This idea of um, intersectionality, as, as far as I'm aware, is that it's it's the idea that if you have like multiple like minority statuses, for yeah. instance, if you're black and you're a lesbian, then you're going to have two different um, ways in which you're discriminated against, and that could have like a, a compounding factor where you're um, you don't only have to worry about racism but you also have to worry about you know um, anti-gay um, bigotry so, so okay so the, I, I think it's worth um, really hammering this out because th this is insufferably um, difficult because essentially the terms racism etc I'll just use racism as the stock one but you know what I mean when I'm saying this right yeah um, the, the, the it's essentially a Mott and Bailey argument that's being used, and it's really annoying because they, the like for example, I'm I'm doing a study on white fragility at the moment, the book by Robin DiAngelo, which is essentially a codification of all of these things, and racism has two definitions to her. The first is what I'll just call um, intrinsic racism, which is racism that happens inside a person's head. It's what they think, uh, and mm -hmm. that informs how they act. Uh, the second kind of racism is the political, economic, and social structures that have been created by white people. Uh, so that would be constitutional republicanism, common law, uh, you know, any anything that you think uh, that can be described as invented for and by white, uh, by and for white people, can be considered to be a form of racism, and that's the nefariousness of wokeism. That's why they hate the United States, and that's why mm. everything about the United States is just evil in their view. Um, I don't so, agree with this uh, because I think that this essentially is the Richard Spencer view of races. Uh, it. The, the premise that essentially underpins both Robin D'Angelo and Richard Spencer is, and I, I, I don't really know how to say this in a polite way, because it's essentially that the non-white people can't be like the white people. You know, that's mm. basically what she's getting at and what he's getting at. And I really disagree with this as someone of like a mixed race heritage uh, whose grandfather came here from St. Helena and who absolutely adored England when he came here and, you know, totally integrated. I think they're just completely wrong. Um, and so it... I, I always define racism as procedural, the intrinsic racism, rather than the extrinsic objective systems of structural oppression, things that happen outside of the person. Is it that they... They, they, that she, is she saying that they can't be like white people, or that they're ex, they're expected to be, and they uh, don't the, want to the, be? Yeah, that that's basically it. I, I, it basically boils down to can't because she believes that these cultures don't value the same things that we value, and mm -hmm. therefore we're being racist when we expect them to value the things that we value. Well, she's saying they can't like biologically, or that. She's kind of taking she a doesn't, cultural she doesn't relativism in, in biological race. Uh, right. She's saying like in, they shouldn't have to because their culture is, you know, there's no such thing as a better culture. Is what she's she saying. never uses the word culture. She always uses mm. the word race. Uh, oh, I, really? I think that there's, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I personally find that really disgusting because I think that race is biological. I mean, that's how we get different skin color and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't think that culture is um, tied directly and like, i don't think it's deterministic i think that uh you, no, know, you raise not. a you know you raise a, a european in japan they're going to speak japanese think japanese act japanese right, right they're going to be japanese right um mm -hmm. so i i disagree with her view on race i do think it's biological but i mean I, that doesn't matter you know i don't i don't 
give a shit. I'm not a biological determinist or anything like that. Um, but that's how she views the world. And that's essentially what wokeism is. It's, it's looking at the world through the lens of racial power politics and assuming that the white people are on top because they're somehow better and their culture is innately oppressive because it requires certain kind of uh, behaviors and attitudes and standards that other cultures don't have you know and it's not that they can't i think but i don't know why i mean she's not very clear on why uh we can't just expect them to to act like europeans you know and um, i don't i don't really you know she's not clear on it but then this whole thing's a goddamn giant muddle that's ruining everything mm -hmm. um mm. I, th I think is that clear enough um i guess i i'm not familiar with her her work um i do i just recently talked to two of my friends who read her book who are both mm. pretty left-leaning and they both did not like the book um and so i'm i'm in i'm in just as somebody who is ignorant about it, I'm inclined to to be biased against it, just because I I usually agree with these two friends quite a bit, and um, so I probably wouldn't like it either. But um, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it, I imagine you view racism as something people do, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that uh, as far as culture goes, like if if the the premise, if you know, if the premise is that you know a a culture that's predominantly white. Is, you know, is built and um, that therefore it cannot um, benefit uh, uh, people who aren't white. I, I think that's a flawed premise. I think that just the, the race of someone who, who builds something um, doesn't speak to whether or not it can or cannot work for somebody who isn't white. I think that we have to still take care that it isn't um, just that it isn't biased in favor of white people, but also that it can work for um, people who aren't white. Yeah, yeah. But the but the there's a you know you believe that it can work for people who aren't white. Yeah. And and she yeah. she pretty much doesn't. She doesn't really believe that they they can't they they can work for non-white people. Uh, that's why it's called a white supremacy, even though it can have a black president, even though it can have you know various cities that are just like stuff top to bottom with black people who are running the show that it's the structure of the system was designed by white people theoretically for white people and therefore that's what makes it white supremacy now i do think that um it's possible for somebody who isn't white to to like i, I think it's possible for a black person to be racist against other black people I, I think that's entirely possible yeah um yeah but you you see racism as a belief that can manifest as an action so it's intrinsic yeah, uh, yeah and i agree through, through that definition anyone could be a racist right and a lot of right. people are you know it doesn't but through the the idea of systemic structures of institutional oppression uh that means that i mean she literally says only white people are in a position to deny black people their human rights and I, i'm thinking of some of the videos i've seen going around you know where the, there's like 20 black kids jumping on the head of this one white kid and i'm like oh good thing that you know they can't be racist to you buddy good thing they're not denying you your human rights institutionally or else you might be in trouble you know what i mean it's like it's, it's yeah awful. i mean it's it's uh, there's uh, it's like um different kinds of racism that people are talking about you know people yeah. are talking about racism on a personal level versus on an yeah, institutional yeah. level and they kind of get conflated sometimes yeah i uh i have a question because it sounds like we're all kind of in agreement on being against woke culture not enthusiastic about woke culture especially the robin d'angelo stuff which is promising hmm. i hope a lot of people feel that way my question really is is just because we're not a part of that culture, we very much can see that culture affecting the world around us in the way that we might have once seen Christianity affecting the world around us. And my big question is, you know, uh, we uh, have tried, well, the anti-theists in particular, I consider myself a pro-theist, atheist, but the, the anti-theists in particular have tried to minimize the impact of religion. And my question is, is like the woke stuff coming in to replace that need people have 
for belonging to a community, for moralizing, for condemning outsiders, all that stuff that we didn't like in Christianity is the woke stuff coming in and kind of replacing that urge that people have as an untested religion. It's some religion that hasn't been through this evolutionary cycle that Christianity has been through. I, I would say yes to this. And I think that the way I would uh, approach it is by looking at imperatives, moral imperatives, uh, because that's really, I think the, the real value of religion is, is in, you know, helping people who may not be the brightest tools in the box, uh, sharpest tools in the box, sorry, um, to figure out what they should do. Cause I think it all comes down to, you know, what should you do? Um, and, the alternative, like religions, are a useful tool in this regard because it effectively puts the the author of the imperative in an unassailable position. God said this, therefore you shut up and do it. You know you don't need to think about this. But um, for a lot of people, I think that's useful and might be necessary. Um, whereas with the the sort of woke social justice uh, view of um, just morality. Uh, you can see that every single one of them is what we could call uh, a moral legislator, someone who gets to set a morality using uh, whatever whatever axioms for the culture that's being expressed. In this case, it's wokeism. But you can uh, you can start from the woke position and look at what's happening, look at the sort of logical structure of it, and then advance an argument from that position which this is why you get such a tendency towards the sort of circular firing squad in the woke culture you know it's very easy because if someone deviates from what could be considered to be moral perfection then it's very easy for someone to say well i'm superior to you i'm a better person than you because i can see that you should have x when you instead y um and therefore that person loses their moral authority and other people can agree with it and you know the you know how the mob goes um so that's that's the the sort of different paradigms that you're operating with, whereas before you'd get only priests who'd be the interpreters of the moral authority of God. Uh, now anyone can do, may, be the moral authority of the new religion. Um, yeah, but I mean, I think that um, the notion of of God in the the Bible carries with it a much much more. Um, Author a much more authoritarian, uh, strict. Like this is this is it's written. You know, you, it's this is the dogma. Yeah. Uh, I think that with with so called you know wokeism or what or whatever that it's not it's not as set in stone. It's not it's not like like this woman's book. Uh, what is her name? Robin DiAngelo. Robin DiAngelo um, yeah. I don't see that as like an, a a bible. I, I see a lot of people disagreeing with it. I. I see. Um, I, I I just see much less of a chance for for advantage being taken, like um, of of just using using this as like a an avenue toward authoritarianism. I I don't think it's as prevalent as religion. I think what 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 it often seems to me is that um, the worst of the worst is is highlighted and made to seem like the norm like made to seem like it's like people are extrapolating this to the rest of society and thinking that the world's going to hell when i think that if you just went out and and, and talked to regular people about this stuff they would have most of them would probably have no idea what you're talking about um yeah yeah, that's that's true. Um, that that is it. It is true that most people wouldn't know what you're talking about because it's uh, it is quite a like fringe cult, you know. Um, yeah. But but I don't think it's any less authoritarian or totalitarian. Uh, I think in fact it um, allows almost anyone to be a totalitarian. Uh, it gives anyone access to the tools that are required to order people around and feel justified in doing it, which I think why the SJW spaces end up looking like they do, you know, they're, they're very intolerant. Um, and in, in, and it really does look a lot like, as you say, you know, and I'm not trying to downplay the potential um, oppressive nature of religion in this. I actually think it's a, a secular version of the same impulse that's going on. Um, mm. And it's kind of democratized the tools of oppression 